Linkbeard was probably gonna <laughs> jump off to underage <laughs> or some crap. <laughs> oh god. Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies, it's just a fact and it's totally science. <laughs> Go ahead and look it up if you want. Today, we're diving back into r slash tales of neck beards. Yes, indeed, it is Link Beard part number three. And I'm super excited to get into it, as always. Been really enjoying Linkbeard's uh, derpery, just being some, somewhat of a harmless neckbeard. Like, oh, he really wanted a horse. Oh, he stole some chips a couple of times. But now we're starting to see the, the mask really peel off in both this part and the next part, as you will probably hear me say in just a couple of days since I'm recording these parts back to back. There is going to be like a big old compilation. I think it's going to be the Stratbeard saga probably. So you can look forward to a big beefy three hour video tomorrow. I'm trying to get a little bit ahead of schedule. So me and my editor can both relax for the Christmas holidays. Christmas holidays. That's right. Been drinking some of that brandy and eggnog. <laughs> I wish they don't even have eggnog in the Philippines. It's an abomination. It's a travesty. I need some nog, bro. That was like the best part of Christmas. <laughs> and that was December, so we could turn it up. Anyways, I do hope that you guys will enjoy the episode. We'll get some plugs and disclaimers out of the way, and then we will dive right into some of this tales of Neckbeard's Cringe. The Legend of Linkbeard, Part 3. Possibly misogynistic? Yeah, maybe. That's one of the boxes that he has to check, isn't it? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Hello, everyone! Hi, Tidy Harry Potato! <laughs> the Tidy Potato is back with the next part of this tale of absolute bullshit as we continue down the fucked up iceberg that is the legend of Linkbeard. That's right, first two episodes, that was just the tip. And you know, just the tip ain't never enough. You gotta go deep. <laughs> so, uh, strap yourselves in and try to have some fun. Cast of characters remains the same as usual. Remember how I mentioned offhand that Linkbeard might have been a low-key misogynist right at the end of the last part? Well, this is where those tendencies start to shine through just a little bit more. Just a little bit. You promised me a lot. I'm looking for that soul cringe. <laughs> Dish it up, baby. <laughs> I guess we'll see. The tale starts off a few days before the next session. Dungeon Master started using a group on Facebook Messenger so we could shoot each other messages and let each other know when games were on or if they were canceled or if someone was going to be late. I ended up friending everyone there except Linkbeard. And I am still friends with all the people that I friended to this very day. Anyways, much to my surprise, Nina asked me out to lunch, which I really didn't expect. Don't get me wrong, she's nice and everything, but we don't really talk too much outside the D&D. Well, that's the idea of the lunch break, isn't it? So you can kind of get to know each other a little bit more? Develop somewhat of a bond? A little bit of girl power going on? Makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> and OP said, but hey, she wanted to hang out. And I myself didn't have many female friends, so I thought, yeah, why the fuck not? <laughs> Indeed, girl power, like I said. Once again, the day is saved thanks to the Powerpuff Girls. So the two of us ended up going out to lunch together, and we did some female bonding stuff. Orange Mocha Frappuccinos! Orange Mocha Frappuccino! <laughs> God, I'm making so many Zoolander references. I'm gonna have to watch that movie again <laughs> relatively soon. Which I found weird, honestly. I still hate shopping for clothes and shoes, but Nina wanted to do it. And we eventually got to go to an art shop, so I was happy at the end of the day. Apparently, Nina asked me to hang out for two reasons. One to try and get ideas on what to get Ori for his birthday, her boyfriend for those that don't remember, and also to question me about Linkbeard. 
So one pleasant conversation and one uh, not so pleasant conversation. <laughs> but all right, take the good with the bad, I guess. As a side note, Nina and I got Ori some cool looking ring from a place that was literally called Guy Stuff. Yeah, that's the place where you go for guy stuff. <laughs> uh, well, the name is not creative, but I can't say it's descriptive. I remember that because they have a lot of interesting stuff there, so yeah, free advertisement. If you're a guy, you need some stuff, go on down to guy stuff, not a sponsor. <laughs> Although, if they want to toss some money to me, I, I wouldn't say no. <laughs> So, Potato, what do you think of Linkbeard? Sugar-coated version or unfiltered? You can swear in front of me. You do it all the time at the table. <laughs> oh, poor Nina. She seems like a sweet little bean. Fair. So, I told her exactly what I thought of Linkbeard, which, in hindsight, makes him look like a saint. I think he's a creepy-ass-looking basement dweller with a Zelda fetish. Probably the kind of fucker that would grope someone's ass on the bus, or believes that no means try harder. I have no fucking idea how or why Dungeon Master is friends with him, but DM is just way too nice for his own good. I swear he would cuddle a Tasmanian devil and call it a precious bean as it consumed his goddamn face. Oh well, now we're coming after everybody. Just shotgun blast everybody in the group. <laughs> You're getting some pepper. Yeah, I got similar feelings, Nina said. Really? <laughs> Duh. <laughs> yeah, I, I think he was looking at my boobs last session, and it made me really uncomfortable. Thank you for sitting next to me and blocking him when we play. I just shrugged it off, because I'm usually the buffer between my small group of female friends and... Weird guys that want to date them. At least, when I have female friends, that is. No problem. Plus, Ori would probably beat the shit out of Linkbeard if he really did try something that made you uncomfortable. Oh, Ori wouldn't do that. Ori might look like he could beat your ass, and honestly, he probably could, but Ori's really a huge teddy bear. When it comes to things like spiders and bugs, I'm the one that takes care of them. Poor baby cries. Not Ori. I refuse to believe it. <laughs> He's still getting the Schwarzenegger voice. I don't care. To be fair, you get a shit ton of Huntsman spiders around your area, right? I fucking hate those dinner plate sized fucks. <laughs> spiders are cute, though. I have a pet tarantula. They got some giant ass spiders in the Philippines, man. Like, the size of both of your hands put together, and it's just like... Walking around on the walls, hanging out on the ceilings. I used to whack those fuckers with a broom, but my wife got really mad at me. <laughs> so now I uh, gently sweep them outside. Although, yeah, I haven't seen one in a couple of years, so maybe we kill them all. I mean, release them all into nature. <laughs> As we do. Definitely. Uh, and that, kids, is one of the reasons that I try not to judge people by their looks. I mean, Nina looks like the most super girly girl in the world, but she has a pet tarantula. I can't remember what kind, but his name is Romeo. Rip, little buddy, you eight-legged fucker. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Romeo always dies at the end. I don't even know how long spiders live. I mean, they're just bugs, right? And then I get somebody in the comments that's like, Actually, it's an arachnid. <laughs> okay, you get my meaning though, right? So, back to the night of the game. Yes, please pull me off this tangent. <laughs> Once again, Linkbeard did not bring snacks to share. Shocker. I'm still very salty about this point and always will be. Ori and I ended up sitting on either side of Nina, which, once again, annoyed Linkbeard. As it turned out, Linkbeard was still pretty salty over the whole pony thing, as I would come to find out. That's what happened in episode 2. Linkbeard missed out on a pony. How is he going to be the hero of time now? Ain't going to happen. <laughs> However, I did promise DM that I wouldn't deliberately provoke him, so it was kind of whatever. I wasn't going to make a big deal out of it. That doesn't mean that he wouldn't, right? <laughs> The game picked up from where it left off, 
and we went about getting info on where the queen and her baby were. Over the course of questioning and a combination of average to shitty roles on everyone's part, I somehow ended up being the de facto face of the group. I thought everyone was okay with that, and we ended up getting some good information. Everything became much more open world, and we were given three possible locations as to where the queen might be. All right, OP's the leader. For the sake of brevity, we're just going to call her the hero of time. And Linkbeard starts crying in the corner. <laughs> You'll love to see it. After looking at our options, we decided it might be good to head south to Luralin. We figured that even if the queen wasn't there, we could probably find some cool stuff. <laughs> and isn't that what adventure is really all about? Also, Hatno Village was along the way, so we could probably find some cool stuff and pick up some side quests. Bro, that queen ain't never gonna get found. <laughs> I actually suggested it, which earned the table an annoyed groan from Linkbeard. What's up, Linkbeard? Asked Dungeon Master. Uh, why do we have to do what Potato says? He asked. Role play it out, said DM. If your character has a problem with Potato's character, then talk about it in game. And don't give me any bullshit like, oh, it's what my character would do. As the DM, it's my character to suddenly summon the moon on your head and kill you instantly. Role play it out. DM fucking hates the. It's what my character would do, excuse. If that's your only reason for doing something douchey, then DM has no problem with being just as douchey right back to you. He wasn't a pushover when it came to his games. I don't know if I could sign off on being vindictive towards your players, but I do like the role play it out thing. You can't just say something and be like, yeah, that's what's happening now. No, show me. <laughs> show don't tell. That's rule number one in, uh... Something. Writing, I guess. <laughs> but you're basically writing a story just with your mouth. Anyways, <laughs> so reluctantly, on Linkbeard's part, we roleplayed out his grievances at the table. Oh, why did we have to do what Potato said without question? Asked Linkbeard. Why can't we go to Zora's domain first? I want to go there first. <laughs> You make a strong argument, but no. <laughs> Ludo rolled his eyes at this. Because, Linkbeard, Lurlin's the closest place. It's also one of the most isolated parts of the kingdom, which means that Ganon's followers probably wouldn't suspect that she would go there. Even if the queen isn't there, we might find a clue. Yeah, well, uh, she didn't give us much of a choice, said Linkbeard. I don't know why the chief listened to her anyways. I mean, I'm a town guard. <laughs> I represent Hyrule more than some Gerudo. <laughs> oh, we drag a race into it. I mean, fantasy race, but still a little hinky. You don't gotta talk down about members of your party. Akira just shook his head at this. By that logic, the chief should have only listened to me. I'm from that village, and the Sheik are extremely close to the royal family. Even closer than some random guard. Well, you're just a child, <laughs> grumbled Linkbeard. I, playing my character as a slight misandrist, because Gerudo women, living in a town full of women their entire lives, probably don't think super highly of men. So I just laughed at Linkbeard's character. Calm down, everyone. I was simply drawing on my experiences as a merchant to speak with eloquence and confidence towards someone of authority. However, if it means so much to you and your ego, I'll let you lead the charge next time, little man. Uh-oh, now the claws are coming out. <laughs> Here it comes. Who are you calling little? Growled Linkbeard. Dude, I'm literally seven feet tall. Gerudo are pretty tall compared to Hylians. Yeah, she's the tallest out of all of us, said Ori. Things eventually simmered down after that, and we ended up making it to Hotno Village, and we went about doing our own things. Oh, uh, why do she get to do her own thing? <laughs> no, he didn't say that. I think I wanted to look for a better weapon or a shield. We did some more things in town, 
and Linkbeard attempted really hard to try and get information on the Queen, which really didn't work because he was a dumb fuck and couldn't grasp that he was phrasing his question wrong. He kept asking villagers, Have you seen the Queen? Where's the Queen? Have you seen the Queen and her baby? And, <laughs> and varying questions of the same nature. Considering that they were in hiding and everyone thought that the Queen was still in Hyrule, he got fuck all and ended up getting frustrated. I might as well if I was a player that cared about moving the story along, but I'm not, luckily. <laughs> I like hijinks. And a large part of that is probably because I could never figure out how to get that question right. What is the proper phrasing for that question? I'm sure the comments will help me out. <laughs> this is bullshit, grumbled Linkbeard. We know the queen came through here. Why will anyone tell me anything? DM, this is bullshit. Role play it out. <laughs> Maybe if you didn't ask stupid questions, then you'd get the right answer, I suggested, and got a glare from the DM. Oh, you just want to hog the spotlight, accused Linkbeard. You're always stealing the spotlight and trying to insert yourself into everything. Yeah, that's a bit of projection going on there from both of them. What is the proper question, OP? Please let me know. And Linkbeard, goddamn beyond saving, he truly does think that he's the hero of time. Like, <laughs> it's so frustrating to watch. Now, to be fair, as I said, I had become the face of the group. Out of our whole group, I was probably the most experienced at tabletop RPGs, and I feel like I was at home in Hyrule. I wasn't trying to take the spotlight, but I had a basic idea of what kinds of questions Dungeon Master probably wanted us to ask in order to get the story moving along. However, I always ask the opinion of other people, including Linkbeard. When it came to combat, I was a fighter. But Linkbeard was also a fighter, so I didn't really see how he could be pissed off at that. I just played the role of fighter, and did take a fair bit of damage, and tried to stop the squishier players from getting squashed in a fight until they got some better HP. And all of that sounds about right. Sometimes you do get thrust to the front of the group. And yes, that can change pretty quickly, but if you're trying to institute a mutiny within the group, then just whining like a little bitch is probably isn't the way to go about it. Ugh. I reminded him that I had said earlier in the session that I was going to take a step back and not take up the spotlight, and give everyone some more time to shine during the roleplay parts of the game. Everyone else pretty much agreed with me, with Ori pointing out what I pointed out. That being that Linkbeard was asking stupid questions and getting stupid answers. Well, Linkbeard didn't like that, and pouted for the rest of the session, as he so often does. But what is the question? I don't understand. Maybe I'm just not smart enough. But whatever, leading the group is not my agenda. My agenda is strictly hijinks and shenanigans. <laughs> that quickly became a trend in our games. Linkbeard would either complain about some story aspect or something we did. We would talk about it and verbally fix the situation. Linkbeard would then complain about the thing that we had just fixed. <laughs> we would tell him that we had fixed it. And then Linkbeard would just be an insufferable little bitch for the rest of the session. Thank fuck it was usually in the last 20 minutes or so of the session. In hindsight, it was probably why he was allowed to be around for so long. Whatever, let him pout at his house like I give a shit. <laughs> Go home, Linkbeard. I said that a hundred times in the last episode. So, the session ended and everyone was leaving. Akira was heading over to his sister's place to look after his niece and asked us if any of us had plans for the evening. I think Dungeon Master was going to play games, while Ludo needed to go home and study or something. Linkbeard was probably going to jack off to underage hentai or some crap. <laughs> oh god. FBI, open up! Ah! I mean, yeah, totally normal non-jacking off related activities. <laughs> For reals. And then Nina spoke up. Oh, Ori and I are going to go watch a movie at his place, she said. 
That seemed to set Linkbeard's sensors off. Eh, you two know each other outside of D&D? &D? Yeah, bitch, we just sat next to each other every single session. What are you talking about? What is their relationship dynamic? Is Ori just such a strong, silent type that he doesn't say a goddamn word to her? I guess the more likely explanation is that Linkbeard is just so socially inept that he doesn't pick up on even the largest clues. Ugh. Well, yeah. Ori and I have been dating for a few years. Why? That's <laughs> Linkbeard. He's a roided up Chad. Hey, you could do so much better. <laughs> <laughs> like you? No, nah, no, nah, I'm going to pass on that. That's when the room went quiet. Keep in mind, Linkbeard said this in front of everyone. Ori was right next to Nina. He was picking up her bag while she was putting her shoes back on for crying out loud. Ori just kind of shook his head like he couldn't believe this shit, but also wasn't surprised by it. Dude, I'm standing right here. And I decided to be a little shit and once again provoke the neckbeard. That's my favorite game. <laughs> I hoped to shame him into shutting the hell up because he was a cringy little asshole. What kind of dickless shit stain says something so disrespectful? Linkbeard, you don't know their lives. Telling someone you don't know that they could do better in their love lives is just one of the weaneriest wiener moves that a wiener could do. Why do you gotta be such a wiener? <laughs> Ask me about my wiener! She chose a, another word that starts with C, but you can't say that on YouTube. But also, yeah, OP, this ain't really your fight. Like, let Ori handle the thing. Hopefully with his fists. <laughs> That's what I'm really waiting for. Linkbeard went red, and it looked like he was gonna yell at me, and that's when Ludo piped up. She's right. Only a loser would have the audacity to say something like that to someone that you hardly know. Yeah. I'm not a caveman, <laughs> said Ori, but it's pretty obvious that I could probably beat your ass if you tried to fight me. Walk away if you want to live. <laughs> Some more words were exchanged and Linkbeard ended up cursing us out as he stormed out of the room. I thought that that was the last time that we were going to see Linkbeard. Unfortunately, later that week, Dungeon Master told me that Linkbeard had apologized to him for swearing in his house. Oh yes, the most chivalrous of chivalrous codes. <laughs> DM also told me that if Linkbeard apologized to both Ori and Nina, then he could keep playing. On a side note, he also asked me to stop saying Wiener because it was making Ludo feel awkward. <laughs> Ludo just wasn't comfortable with too much swearing, apparently. So because of DM, the legend of Linkbeard continues. Part of me wants to be mad at DM for putting up with this, inviting this quite obvious beard back into the game when all he's really trying to do is scheme on this chick that he doesn't really know. It's a bad look, but also I gotta be grateful to DM because the legend lives on. <laughs> the story gets to continue. Now this is some of the, the beardish behavior that I was talking about. It's not top level beard. Although it does quite easily hit, uh, you know, medium-high levels of beardery. But I'm looking for the, the full shebang of bang Give it to me! <laughs> I think in the next episode, from looking at the episode titles, uh, yeah, that's gonna be the one, but you're gonna have to wait a couple days for it, alright? I do appreciate your patience. If you like this episode, I hope that you like, comment, and or subscribe on the video. Maybe share it around. That would make me so very happy. Although I don't go, you know, Googling myself or anything. Not most of the time, anyways. <laughs> but if you did share and, and you want to let me know about it, that would be cool. I will give you a very warm and heartfelt thank you for that. We've also got links in the description that you can check out if you'd like. We got podcasts and playlists and plugs of all types. That includes my wife and I's channel, Mr. and Mrs. Red X. We do some praying mantis stuff over there if you want to hang out with us for a little bit. That would be pretty sweet. We've also got my social medias, of course. Twitter, Discord, Facebook. Yes, indeed. We've also got my Patreon and my gorgeous, wonderful, beautiful, generous patrons. Currently, I'm recycling the patron list for the uh, first few days of the month because 
Patreon gets a little bit weird. <laughs> I don't know if payments are late or what, but we dropped about 20 patrons, which makes me sad, but I'm hoping that the payment's just late or Patreon's having trouble or something's going on apart from like a mass exodus. But still, I would like to thank them as I do every episode. So thank you very much. Robert Waits, Baron Von Wagon Pants, Jarhead Jerry, Oorah, Logan Wolf, Arr, Arr, River Jerry, blah, 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 Captain Cloud Jerry, Hong Kong, <laughs> Aaron W, Twisted Child, Cinema Susie, Danny, Jerry Nerdnick, For a Blank Sign, Fire Drake, Giggle Jerry, Are You Ready? <laughs> Livingston loves Jerry, so does Red X, Mr. Anime Manga Fan, Rogue, Silent Revolver, Magdalene Marshall, Thornrose, Jerry the OG, Becca, Jerry Kitsune, Little Lone Wolf, Vanilla Mel, Satori, 211 Jerry, The Return of Jerry, a Jerry of Juggling Jerry's, <laughs> Althea Blue, Anunnaki, Assassin Punk Jerry, Bang Bang, Atheist Jerry, he's so euphoric, Grizzly, Bailey Joy, Bearded Jerry, watch out for that guy, Bitch Gremlins, Blade the Hero, Blameless Fish, Blip Bloop Jerry, but Jerry it's cold outside. <laughs> God damn it! We need Christmas songs. Can we get beardy Christmas songs for you? Camille Sarah, Commander J Tank, Delta Rune Jerry, Dennis Dayton, Dinosaur Nightlight, Disposable Waifu, Aaron Lennox, Frozen Over Studio, Gypsy, Hadrian BR, Heathcliff, Itchy Nuts, Just Scratch and Bro, A Pimp Named J Chris, J M Coon, Jennifer Schaefer, Jerry Blacktail, Jerry the Smoke, Jerry the Other Jerry's, Jerry the Outlaw Mother Trucker, Honk Honk, John Hero, Jolly Black Jerry, Oh Oh Oh, Simpoofa, Cause if you're poofing it's free. K Jerry W Kajow, Crowhe, Lady Jerry Nick's Tom, Miss Monday, Lord Lionel, Marble Jerry got lost on their way to the roller rink. <laughs> <laughs> What's with the roller rink? What's going on here? Ah, oh, Jack is rule. Melgar the Destroyer. My boy now with Nick. Natari. Nightmare Jerry. Orgami Jerry. Steve. Panda Prince Jerry. Phantom of the Pines. Jerry Kins and Jerry Beth. Rose Jerry Miller. <laughs> TSM Kirby. Safe Spaces Hate Satire. Oh, is this a political statement in the middle of the Patreon reading? Okay. <laughs> Thanks for that. Sarita the Lolita. Serrated Dash. Mr. J. The J definitely stands for Jerry. Staples, aka Jerry Yeet. Stephanie Goodner. Synaptic Boomstick. Tamago. Tapioca Boogaloo. Tano Ferret. Teddy the Belize. Ten Ton Monster. The One True Fusky. Tom. Put us the Jerry on the inside that counts. <laughs> The Jerry monologues, Will Mags, Go Red Mooney, Kira, you're a wizard, Jerry. <laughs> Redwood, Goose says honks, Geriatric. I love that. I've been waiting so long for that one to pop up. Welcome to the fold, my friend. Naga Viper, Saints Blessing, John Indoors, a normal Jerry. Read in the Arnie voice, please. A beard in the gym is like a dog playing the piano. A smelly dog with no social skills. There you go. <laughs> By request. Probably the only time that I'm going to put the actual patron line in the video, though. <laughs> Hunter of Jerry's, Devourer of All Things Tasty, it's Tom. Admiral T Tank, Alunia Demonista, Emmer Alder, Atomic Jerryzilla, Breaker of the Tom Army, AZ. Banish Knight, Babushka's a radiator jam, Broken Spine, Horseradish, The OG, Different Jerry, that's Cake Jerry, <laughs> California Jerry Girl, yeah, Canadian Links, Carrot Jerry, God of Veggies, good for your eyes, cha 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 chia Jerry, we had a little combo in the Discord, it was nice to talk to you, Chris Mesca, Cinnamon Bunny Dog, Corporal Admiral, Lieutenant Private General, Tiger and Princess Furry Werewolf Jerry, <laughs> Crip Titties, Cuba Jerry, The Fine Jerry, Electrical Fennec, Ever Changing Jerry and Tom, versus Werebeard Apocalypse, ooh, spoofy month has passed, <laughs> but we're still doing the thing, Ghost of Alpha, He Not, welcome to the fold, HMT Mayor, Holy Berry Jerry, Hydra Jerry, Irish Jerry, Jerry, Jerry Binks, me so like you. <laughs> Jerry was a race car driver. Jerry Aldo Rivera, check out that mustache. <laughs> Jerry Bean, yay. Jerry Roxers, uh, also yay. <laughs> Jerry role playing game. Judge Jerry and Executioner, King Tom, Smasher of Jerry Zillas. Oh no. Kitty Kid, Crafty Kitty Cat, Life of a Guardian, Little Air Woods. Maybe next time, Midnight Sun, Milk Fed Gip, Miss Duchess, Not Invisible Angel, I see you. One Leg Jerry, Organic Cam, Princess Rosalie Jerry, Congrats on the Marriage, Ghosty Raptor Out, She's My Jerry Pie, Silurian King, Snarry, That's Nom Jerry, Spoon of the Rogue, Steampunk Kelly, That One Green Jerry, ROP for this video. Thank you times 34, 5. Uh, 40. We'll just round it up to 40. <laughs> the Necro Jerry Con. The original Jerry. Not. The most different Jerry. Maybe. To Infinity Jerry and beyond. Are we there yet? <laughs> Un Jerry. Tom promised Jerry Swiss. Oh no, bad Jerry. It's Tom be a good boy. No Swiss, just effects. Toy size. Go look it up. And by it, I mean another very nice video. Oh boy. I'm completely spent after all that. Also, thank you to my $1 patrons. Thank you guys all so much for supporting on the Patreon. Absolutely killing it. Obviously, I do hope some other people will consider supporting, but if you can't do it right now, don't sweat it too hard, friends. I just appreciate you coming on through, hanging out with me, and I hope that you come on back and hang out with me again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe out there, wash your hands, but also take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy. Maybe like, uh, watching some old Red X videos. <laughs> Boing. <laughs> Always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I shall see you in the next one, and until then, bye-bye.